Well, a huge thank you there to Nitin and his panel on insurance there. Very interesting indeed. If you do have any further questions, please do make sure you speak to any of our speakers in the upcoming breaks. Well, in the meantime, we're now going to turn our attention to sustaining an exponentially growing unicorn. And in this next session, I'll be sitting down with the founder of Mensa, which was founded just last year. Its self-styled house of brands raised 50 million US dollars pre-launch and is looking to scale India's homespun brands and take them global. Time now to discover how Mensa plans to stay profitable and maintain exponential growth. Please give a very warm welcome to Anand Narayanan, the co-founder and CEO of Mensa. Actually, this will uh, make it slightly more relevant for you, Priyanka. I'll give you a little visual. I don't know if you got a chance to look at the video. But that's before and after. Oh, I think there's a, a microphone bomb. on in the other room that we can hear. Do yeah. apologize about that. Uh, right, uh, fabulous to have you here. Uh, I, I wanted to start off. Um, my first question was actually going to be on, you know, how on earth you've, you've achieved this record unicorn status. And you're actually the first in India to achieve this record status in just six months' time. But I'm going to get to that in a moment, if you don't mind. First of all, I'd quite like to know what inspired the journey to set up an aggregator like Mensa. Now, this isn't your first venture as well. So how is this so different? Yeah, so uh, firstly, thank you for having me. It's good to catch up again. I think we caught up maybe four months ago. So, um, uh, so what we're trying to do at Mensa is build a digital global house of brands. So we're trying to build a digital Inditex or a digital Unilever. Uh, so in fashion, beauty, and home. Why the idea and why now? Uh, first, I think uh, distribution, which is historically a moat for most companies, is now democratized with Amazon, Mintra, Flipkart, Nika. Right? You can reach 26,000 pin codes in India and anywhere globally through these channels. So that's changed. Second, with the cost of data and the mobile phones that we have, Digital brand building can be done dramatically differently than what it was before, right? And third is, if you look at India, we have a vacuum of brands. If you take fashion, beauty, and home, which are the lifestyle categories that we operate in, there are less than 25 brands that are over $100 million for the size of the country, right? So there's a vacuum of brands. So you have a different way of brand building, and you have a vacuum of brands. So bringing those two together, I think for the next 10 years, you can build a great set of brands that become household names, both here and globally. So what sort of made you sort of stand out from the rest, though? Because you must have a lot of competition now. So what's been your sort of USP? Yeah, so um, look, firstly, there are, you know, what we're trying to do is to partner up with great entrepreneurs, right? We invest into their business, usually majority, and then grow and scale them. Uh, it's a little bit, I think there were fintech panels earlier. Lending is easy. Collecting is harder. I think likewise, buying is easy. I think growing is harder. So I think the real differentiator here is execution. It's technology and execution. I think building a tech operating system so that you can go across 20, 30, 50, 100 brands. And I think being able to consistently grow and create some breakout brands. I think that's a little bit of what we're really focused on. And that's what gets us also excited. And that's why this business is so interesting. So it's a nice mixture of everything, really, yeah. Indeed. Um, so, as I was saying, Mensa holds the record for achieving unicorn status in just six months, the fastest time that's ever been achieved in India. Absolutely incredible. What have you done differently to lead to this result in such a short amount of time, do you think? Yeah, so firstly, by the way, I think um, valuations follow value creation. So you have to create value. I think eventually investors invest because they want their money which is their LP's money to grow and scale. So I'm less focused on valuation and much more focused on value creation. If you think about value creation, we've been able to move relatively fast and being able to, we've been quite fortunate that we've identified the first 18, 19 brands that we've done have, gone, have grown incredibly well after we've sort of bought them, right? Just organic growth rates have been very, very good. And why is that possible? Because one, we have a great team. I think, you know, eventually people bet on a large space and a great team, and a profitable business model. And I think we have all three. So we have a very large space. It's a multi-hundred billion dollar market. Second, we have an outstanding team that's come very well together. And third is we're building it in a manner that's profitable. So you're not very capital markets dependent, right? You, you need them funding to be able to buy more brands, but you don't need it to run and grow them. 
And I think there is recognition in the market that that's a great sort of business model. And you can run an e-commerce tech business quite profitably. So were you surprised yourself that you managed to do this in such record time? Or would you have maybe wanted a bit more time? Have there have been challenges that have come with that? So I would say, look, we always want more time. I mean, this is an execution game. Um, but I, the way I think about sort of fund and fundraising is you sort of raise money when there is money available and there are people excited about your business, right? But you spend very carefully. You don't sort of raise and just spend all your money. So I, so I sort of separate the two out. So um, that's one. And second is, look, 90% of the time is spent on sort of building a great business, right? And 10% on sort of fundraise and all the rest. So I think that's how we're sort of spending the time, which I think is hopefully what investors appreciate as well. I suppose you've got to strike while the iron's hot, haven't you? When it, when it comes in, you've just got to take it. Yeah, you do. And, and I think, look, it's, it's, it's one, not a winner takes all. And two, we're trying to build this for the long term. So I think it's great. I mean, I, in fact, sometimes wish that we didn't have this fastest tag because I fundamentally believe we're here to build a long-term business. If you think about building a digital Unilever or a digital Inditex, it's not going to happen in a year. It's going to take a decade to do. And we're very focused on building it and sort of building it right. Um, now, your background, uh, I think you started at McKinsey, didn't you? Um, tell us about guilty. some of the... Sorry, sorry? Guilty, yes. Yes, guilty. Um, so tell us about some of the, uh, the core values from that that you've taken on throughout your entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, so I think one thing that McKinsey did really well is there's a value actually which, we still, which we've continued on to Mensa. It's called caring meritocracy, right? It's basically saying, look, um, you hire fantastic people, but, and it's, it is a meritocracy, so performance matters. But how you deal with performance is actually has to be done in a caring way. So it's a great way to get great talent in, develop them and grow them, and I think that's sort of stayed through. Uh, I think the rest of it, maybe not as much, right, because very different business models, but I think the people aspect of it, I think has really carried it through, and I sort of, it helped in Mintra, where I was before, and Midlife as well. Um, going back to the brands that you've got under your umbrella, what do you look for when acquiring brands then? Yeah, so uh, there's no formula, but we look for uh, three things. We look for great founders, because the founders stay with us for between two and five years. We don't do a full buyout. They stay with us and grow and scale. Second, we look for customer love, right, which is something that you can't make up, right? Either you have it or you don't have it. We try the product. We look at reviews and ratings and all of the rest. And third is we look for a moat. Um, what is it that has been built over the last three, four years that is defensible? It could be sourcing. It could be design. Uh, it could be some aspect of the business. But has the founder and the team built something that's interesting and defensible? So these are the three broad things we look for. Of course, there are financial parameters and all the rest. But these are the three major things that at least I spend time on to make sure that we have a clear answer. Um, Mens has been supporting some incredible brands, the latest being Pretty Crafts. Is that right. correct? Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit more about you know, how you add value to your brands as well. Yeah, no, so I think that's a lot of the work, actually. The buying part, as I said, is relatively easy. Um, we work on brands on both the supply side and the demand side. So supply side is, how do we actually improve the selection of the brand? How do we improve the operations of the brand? How do we improve consumer experience of the brand, et cetera, right? A lot of it is done through technology. On the demand side is what we call classic growth hacking, which is, how can you grow while paying the minimum Google, Facebook, Amazon, Mintra, Flipkart tax? that you possibly can and continue to grow and scale the brand. And third aspect is how do you actually do brand building, which is for the brands that are breaking out, how do you invest in viral marketing that starts to make them more of a brand? To give you an example, we have a brand called Villain, uh, which I'm very excited about. It's, it's, it's a terrific fragments brand in men's accessories brand, growing at, you know, north of 400% year on year, right? And it's fantastic. We have an ethnic wear brand since it's International Women's Day. By the way, 50% of our founders our women that we're partnered with. So I'm good really excited Very good about to hear. it. Right? It's great. 50%. Right? So we have a brand called Karagiri, uh, which is a sari brand, which we are now selling not just in India, but globally. So to the India Global Forum, we're taking the India brand and taking it to the US, the UK, and so on, where there's an India spur up. Right? So, so those are the kinds of things that we actually do. So we open up new channels. We use technology for both supply and demand side improvements, if you will. Very good to hear, very good to hear. Uh, what is the vision going forward for Mensa then? How are you going to continue this growth trajectory? So um, I think three parts to it. Uh, first, as I said, it's a long-term compounding game. We're not in a rush. I think we're trying to build this right for the next 10 years. 
Um, success for us in five years is, you know, if 10 of the 100 brands that we have at that point of time become household names, so you can recognize them here in the US, in the UK, right? They become global brands from India, and I think that hasn't happened yet, so that would be one marker of success. I think the second is would love to be known as a great place to work. I think uh, the journey matters as much as the destination. So we would love to see if we can actually nurture great talent. Flipkart and Mintra that I was at has spawned a whole series of entrepreneurs, right, uh, that have all done incredibly well. So we would love to do the same, right? So a great place to work is the second big thing that we would do. Um, and I think the third is really using technology very differently for brand building. And I think uh, would love to sort of be known as sort of the tech-led house of brands, right? So, you know, genuinely having technology that allows us to do non-linear things, whether it's pricing, whether it's any, any aspect of retail and brand building, could we rethink and reimagine that for this century, given the technology that we actually have? So I would say those are the three. I think maintaining growth momentum is important. Doing it profitably and maintaining the growth momentum is the real key to it, which is what I think we're very focused on. So you get both parts of the equation right, not just one. We are running out of time, sadly. Uh, that's actually all I've got, and I'd really love to, to throw out to our audience to hear if uh, any of our audience members have any uh, interesting questions for us up here on the stage. Do we have any questions from our audience? Yes, please do uh, pass over the microphone. It's always nice to make it a, a little bit more interactive, isn't it? See what Absolutely. our audience thinks and uh, what they have in mind as well. Do we have a, a microphone ready? Yes, please do go ahead. Hi, Anand. Good evening. My Hi. name is Abhishek. I'm from True Beacon. What, 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 what runs in your mind when you build such multiple brands across different parts? Like you have... Sorry, could you speak up a little? My question is, how do you think of creating such different and unique brands? You started off with first Mintra, and then you now moved to Medlife, and then you went to uh, right. Mensa. So, I mean... They, they all have M in common. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's not how I made the decisions, though. Um, so, uh, look, a bit of this is I would be, it's serendipity plays a big role, in my view. So I was at McKinsey, and I'd met Sachin and Bini at an event like this, and that's how Mintra happened, right? So a lot of this happens by chance. It's not like you script it. But I think the key is to sort of roll with the punches and enjoy the journey. So I, I think it's more serendipity. I think Mensa and starting Mensa, however, was a conscious choice. And there, I felt like the next 10 years, there's a real opportunity to build brands very differently. So that's why I decided to sort of do uh, Mensa. So, but, 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 the, but the path is, it is what it is. Sorry, just a follow-up question. What, sure. what prompted you to take so much of risk? That's all. Um, so I don't think of it as taking risk. I think of it as betting on yourself. Uh, I think there's risk involved in almost all decisions. And obviously, you have to be thoughtful about it financially at various points of time. I started up much later. I did 15 years at McKinsey first, so concepts of risk also change with that. But I felt like you, if you enjoy the journey and you can build something special, I didn't want to regret not doing it. I didn't want to sort of, the famous sort of, either, I forget the, I think it's Steve Jobs, but the famous thing about you don't want to look back when you're 85 and say, you know, you haven't taken any risk, but you haven't done something exciting either. But do you think it's also quite a good idea to get the experience beforehand, before becoming an entrepreneur? Because as we were saying with the minister yesterday, you know, it's very fashionable to become, you know, everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. Right. But no one realizes it's a 24-hour job. So it is. What, what was your, what so your recommendation? I, my recommendation is I don't think age matters at all. Uh, I do think depending on the startup experience matters. So what we're doing now requires a little bit more experience because you combine investing plus operating plus financial rigor plus whatever. But I think it's not... I think it has to be an idea that catches you and, and that you're passionate about. I think what most people don't realize is it's a slog. I think people talk about your evaluation. People don't talk about your day-to-day. -day. So I think the day-to-day -day is tough as an entrepreneur, and I think that never goes away. So the key to doing this at whatever age is, one, be financially prudent so that, you know, you can feed your family and put your kids to school and all the rest. And the second is be passionate about the idea because you know tough times are going to come. And so you're going to ride through the cycles and you're going to keep at it till it actually lands somewhere, right? So I think that's the second thing that I would say is important. Very good advice there. Advice. Thank you. Uh, we do have time for one more, two more. And there's a gentleman at the front here as well after. Hi. Should I? Remember? I two didn't heckle the you, front. <laughs> Yes, please go ahead. Can I go ahead? Okay. My name is Ravi Anand. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, why this name Mensa? Because as soon as I heard Mensa, I thought it was a perfume or a yeah. care product. 
And right. how did you come up with this name and You know, idea? most other people think of it also as a high IQ society. It's none of yeah. those three. Yeah. Mensa <laughs> actually means constellation. Okay. So we're trying to build a constellation of stars. Each of our brands is a star. So we want to make a constellation of stars happen. So that's why the name Mensa and it also followed the M theme, but that wasn't okay. the most important. And my part. next question was on IQ, because I heard you require 98 <laughs> to be on Mensa. No. So <laughs> if you have less than that, can we? Yeah, no, okay. there's no IQ thing, so. All right, very quickly, yeah. the gentleman yeah. at the front here. Yeah. Uh, very, very quickly. I think we've got time here. Yeah, we've got a, a few more seconds here. Um, if you had to guess out of your stable of brands, which sector do you think will produce the first Indian global brand? Beauty. Beauty. I think beauty and personal care. I think it goes, translates across, and there's Indian ingredients that Big go across. Big business, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And very quickly, I think we'll yeah, quickly throw over. Oh, sorry, he's taking the microphone away from you. Sorry. Very, very quickly. Final question of all the right, session. All right. So for the, for the entrepreneurs who are listening to you right now, uh, what are the reasons they should choose to be part of Mensa and not the others? Great team. Lots of wine <laughs> from I'm my so personal good. wine collection and the ability to build the coolest brands on the planet. Great, great. Good answer. And, and that's all we've got time for. Some fabulous questions, by the way. Thank you so much for, for those. Thank, and thank you. you so much for joining us. Really brilliant chatting with you. Thank you so much. Great.